Hello, in this video, I'm going to give you a quick rundown at the start here of the basic tools and features within Jamboard. And then later on in the video, I'll just show you a couple of things to pay attention to for teachers for ways to spice up your Jamboard usage if you're beyond the basics. So first thing you'll notice when you come into Jamboard is it's usually just a blank white screen. There won't be anything here. And at the top, it will see one out of one. That means how many slides or jams you have available within this individual Jamboard. So you'll see I've actually already added in other jams or slides within this Jamboard. This is just my first one. So now we'll take a look at the tools that appear on the left here. So first we have our pen. You can change the type of pen or highlighter or um, painter and change the color as well. So I can add whatever I need using my tool there. The next tool down is an eraser. So maybe I don't like what I just did and I can use the eraser for that. The select allows you to move something that you have placed on the Jamboard. So for example, if I add my ideas on a sticky note, which is this one here, I can then use my select to move that sticky to anywhere I'd like. Another thing to know with stickies is after you've added one, you can change the size, move it around. You can double click on it again to add more ideas or change the color of the sticky note. Another thing you can do is add images. So you'll see there are some different options here, whether it's upload, if you have something already on your computer, if you have something on Google Drive, or you can just do a Google search and add that way. So we'll look for a lovely cat. And same as the stickies, you can resize, move, and even change the angles if you'd like. Another thing you can do is add circles. So that's a shape for right now. So one thing you might do for students is potentially have a Venn diagram or a way to help them organize their thoughts. So I can always click on the three dots here and change the order of this to send to back. So that way I can start organizing similar ideas into circles to try to help categorize my thoughts. All right, so that's uh, the start of the basic tools here. Um, you'll notice that whenever I did my handwriting here, it was quite a bit messy. So one thing you might want to use as well if you're working with a trackpad or a mouse there is a text box here. So you can always add a text box and add your wording that way, whether it's just words, a title, or even a question. The last important thing that I think is helpful for teachers is the laser tool. So if you're having students share out or you're helping them to focus on something, you can use the laser to help you focus in on maybe what students are talking about. So now we'll take a look at some of my example jams up at the top and some considerations for virtual teaching or concurrent teaching. So you'll notice at the top, when you click here, it can show you a whole layout of all of the slides you've built in. And so if you have a template built like this one, um, I know that this was blank and students added ideas to it. You could also create pre-made structures and duplicate slides so that breakout groups can work on something. So in this format, we have students doing a consensus map where they're adding their thinking first individually, and then they're coming together to come up with a group idea. This can be helpful during the class setting when you are looking at the top here. You can see students have started answering their individual notes here. This one still hasn't started, and this group looks like they're completely done. So when you look at this view, it can give you a really quick glimpse into which breakout groups you might need to pop into for support. 